Well, good morning, Ewall family, friends. I say uh, we call serial visitors once we've been visiting. Virtual yeah. congregation. Virtual congregation. Where, yes. Wherever you fall in that spectrum. <laughs> I'd like to say good morning to each one of you that's here. And remember, we open up with a high five. A, um, of course, we can't hug a neck, but you can send a little hug emoji right there. Mm -hmm. uh, say hello to someone as you come on. Or a handshake. Handshake. Yeah. That's it. Maybe, you might, maybe one of the emojis have one like, like you're doing a handshake or something. I don't it's know. possible. I think they got everything else out there. So it's definitely possible. Oh like, good morning, good morning. I'd like to try to um, give an opportunity to come in and say hello. Yeah, I'm going to give people time to get on. Like you, I know how you like to see the emojis and the hearts and everything else pop up. I do. So it's, That's just my it's, way of connecting, you know, with us being on this side of the camera, y'all on that side of the camera. Uh, you know, we're just a touchy family here. And like to just uh, touch that way of an emoji. So if you would send an emoji, just say hello to not just us, but the ones who's on with you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is our second Sunday in October already. Yes. Yeah. We're in the second Sunday. We are we are already halfway through. With the this is the second month of fall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second yeah. month of fall, so I know you... fall started oh, September 22nd. Yep, October. so if you like Pastor Angela, you have pumpkins out, and you're putting out your spices, and you're putting out your different fragrances. Fragrances, yes. Uh, you're putting out, you know, all the sweet things that, that remind you, you know, what is it, pumpkin, uh, cinnamon, leaves, yeah. leaves, everything that shows all the different colors of, of God's creation and how, he, mm -hmm. how he's showing you and you're walking through and living through transition. And that's what it is. The seasons, yeah. are, seasons are nothing more... Then God's yeah. showing you, God uses the world and nature to show us That's how to, yeah. to transition. And I know we're probably going to be teaching on that later on, but he shows us how to transition from one season to the next. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what season you may be in, um, trust God in that season. Yeah. Know that he has you, know that he's with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we said it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know we, we said it before, you are loved. I want you to know that God cares. I want you to know that you're valued. Mm -hmm. How do you figure out I'm valued? Because God would be taking the time to break down the word to you right now. Yeah. You wouldn't have stopped to click on. You wouldn't have stopped to listen. You wouldn't have stopped to take time to hear what was being said. Because deep inside, deep inside there's something that tells you there's more than where I, you know, more than what I'm going through, or more than what I'm encountering or more than what I've accomplished or more. There's always more. And you know what? In God, you can find that more mm -hmm. because he's more than enough. More than enough. I would just say in your season, whatever season you're in, I know in a natural wind, the fall season, um, some have different favorite seasons of the year um, or whatever that with the students, what's your favorite season of the year? But whatever season you're going through in your life, you can truly, I'm going to tell you as a uh, witness, you can enjoy your season on purpose. Not so much, uh, you know, summer might not be your favorite season because it's just so hot and, um, you know, you get sunburned or what have you, but yet still you can still enjoy it. And so in your natural, in your spiritual way of thinking, I'm thinking about your season might not be that well with you. Like mm -hmm. you said, I've, I'm living with my uh, sister, um, believe in God for my home, mm -hmm. but thank God you have somewhere to live. You yeah. know, so many things you can be grateful for in your yeah. season, but don't let what that one thing that uh, that you wish you had cause you not to experience the joy in the season that you're in. Thank mm -hmm. God you have a sister. Thank God you can live with her, you know. So there's so many things you can thank God for in that season, but oh, yeah. you, God can show himself to you in that season who he is and you can enjoy it. and remember before you know it you'll be out buying your own new home or what have you and just say, I remember this or whatever just like in our seasons like I remember winter how winter was I remember how blah blah but enjoy I'm just saying I just want to say enjoy your season no matter what yeah we had some hard seasons in our lives but we was on purpose to laugh on purpose and we found out it's not laughing fake I mean, truly laughing, yeah. the tears rolling out of my eyes. I love a great gut laugh sometimes. You need that. 
and just in that season of dryness that we're in, but the love, the family fun we had was like, you would even know that we was in a dry season. Mm -hmm. So in your dry season, I'm telling you, God want to be in every season of your life. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking about uh, Shadrach and Meshach when they, been, when they went into the fire furnace, God was there. Yeah. And a lot of times we want to get out of something and but God wants to say, hard. because it's hard, but he's, he wants you to experience him even in that. He's I'm mm -hmm. with you always. So even in the dry, he's with you. Don't let yourself or the enemy lie to you that you're alone and, you know, where's God? He's there. Yeah. He's there. Talk yeah. to him. Yes. He's, he's there. So just Good enjoy morning. your season on purpose, regardless where you are. We experience a new season. We're the only ones in the home now. And I'm telling you, it's like, oh, my gosh. You go in the store and say, oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. So wait a minute. We don't have anywhere to go. We don't yeah. have to get we, back. We, we've been, we've yeah. been trained. <laughs> our bodies have been trained. And, mine, yeah. and our minds have been trained to if we go to the grocery store, we got to go fast. Because we got to get back, because someone has basketball practice, or someone has, has, has rehearsal, or someone has to go somewhere, or someone has to be somewhere, or we got to pick somebody up from, mm -hmm. you know, the gym, or we got to be part of the carpool ride, we did something. So we were like on the go. And then a couple of nights we had to catch up. So wait, 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 wait. Yeah. We don't have to pick up anyone. I was like, yes. No one from the gym, <laughs> no one from practice, don't, don't have to give any teammates any rides. We, we don't have to do any of that right now. Why? Because the season that we're in, that part of it is, is gone on. And now we're developing and, and um, building a new season. Mm -hmm. But we're going to enjoy the season that we're in. Yes. And I can tell yeah. you, we're loving it. Good morning, Angela. Angela. 904. Angela Bosch, Ooh, Olson. okay. Good morning. How are you? Good morning to my niece, daughter, Kelly. Good morning. Good morning good to morning. my niece, Cirilla. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good people. Good to see you. Thank God for you being with us today. And everyone else that's out there, those who, call, yeah. who, who are, those who are chiming in from Alaska, Texas, North Carolina, um, Mississippi, Georgia, as well. Georgia, mm -hmm. parts of all parts, all of, parts Florida. of Florida. Yes, there yes. you go. We thank yes. God for you being with us. We don't count it. We don't take it for granted. You could have been anywhere else. You could have logged in anywhere else. We appreciate your thoughts, your prayers, your your support yes. spiritually, financially, physically. We support. We we thank you for everything that you have done. For Ewolf for the kingdom. We just say thank you. All right. All right. Well, I told my husband, I said, well, I'm not going to be up here long once you go and get in this word because there's so much you got to share. And I'm up here just talking, talking, talking. Oh, you're good. You're flowing because you know what? God made more Sundays. And we can always hit the pause button and pick up next week. Okay. Well, if you would, with your family, just gather around and uh, in prayer. You just mm -hmm. bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Lord, we just thank you for waking us up, Lord God, a new day of new mercies. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much that not only you forgave us once, you continue to forgive us over and over again. What love that you have for us. We are so grateful yes. in this season in our lives, Lord Jesus, for who you are. Yes. And Lord God, as we sit around this word now, getting ready to hear your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for every ear, Lord God, that's going to that's gonna hear this word today. Yes, Lord. Every heart, Lord Jesus. We declare that it's good ground. Yes. This word shall be received, Lord God. And we give the devil notice. Yes. You cannot pluck this seed up out of the hearts of the people, Lord mm -hmm. God. Amen. In the name yes. of Jesus, it shall come forth. Yes. They shall receive it, and they shall be the word, Lord Jesus in their lives, Lord Jesus, in the challenges come, they will, Lord God, come back to the word, yes, what your word is saying, and they will see and experience, Lord God, the goodness yes. in their lives because they chose you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray Jesus. and we thank you, thank you and we declare everything, anything that's concerning them, Lord, right now at this moment, their minds may be heavy on whatever, Lord God, we know, Father, in your word, you say you'll perfect that. Yes. So do so now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, we're going to continue living the transformed life. And mm -hmm. we're going to go to work. I'm going to go on the other side. Yeah. Out. Tag you out, girl. <laughs> See you later on around the way. All right, good people. So here we go. Pastor Angela said earlier, we are living the transformed life. Believe it or not, we're in week 24. I, I, I just Sometimes I document stuff, so that's how I know. I'm like, we've been in this? How long have we been in this? 24 weeks. And God is still 
Transformation is going to be key. Transformation is key for any believer. Transformation is key for anyone who wants to improve, advance, or be, or be promoted. Transformation is key. Transformation is something that's ongoing, and it will continue to go on. And as for believers, transformation, will we, you will never get to a place, and I remember uh, my spiritual father telling me this. He said, you'll never get to a place, don't get to a place where you think you've arrived, and don't get to a place where you can't be taught. And a lot of times we as Christians, we think, you know, I've been saved 15 years and wouldn't trade nothing from a journey and praise the Lord, I'm moving on up the mountain and all the other good stuff. And we stop right there at getting saved back in 1940-something. And you know what? That's okay to experience that. And that's great to, to, to rejoice in that. But that's just your beginning. That's not, that's not you've arrived. See, the term mean, the term born again means that you're starting over when a child is born they, you know they've gotten here but they still got things they got to do to grow they were designed to grow you were designed to develop you were designed to and according to Genesis chapter 1 you were designed to take to take dominion and authority so when you're born again you're starting over you're designed to grow you're designed to take dominion. You're designed to, to be promoted, to advance. You're designed to seek out. You're designed to expand territory. You were designed, you weren't designed to just, oh, you're born, that's it. You made it. I mean, the doctors don't, the doctors don't take the baby out in the delivery room. It's a girl. And sit her down, and, okay, we're done. Well, can I take her home? No, you, no, she, she's done. This is as far as she goes. No. There's, there's so much more for her to do. There's so much more for him to do. Why? Because he's here now, so his job is to continue to do what he was doing in the womb. What was that? Growing. Mm -hmm. So your job is to continue to do what you were designed to do from the very beginning. Keep growing. And I think that might be bleeding over into Wednesday night, but that's okay. You know, got to have a little bit of meat with the potatoes. It's all right. So, <clears throat> all right, good morning, Sister Gloria. Thank you for being with us today. Um, as we said, living the transformed life. Now, the last three weeks we had dealt with hearing properly. And I believe the Lord has released me on that. Uh, we touched a little bit on it at the very end of it last week. And we talked about how um, transformation requires building upon what you're hearing. It talks about how not forgetting what you've heard, what you hear, and what you keep hearing. Um, another way we said it was you got to keep going back to the river. You can't scoop out water of revelation in 1990 and still try to apply that to today. You got to keep going back to the river. Well, I'm the Lord your God and I change not. That's what I'm about, Pastor. That reference was not about revelation. It was about a standard of relationship of who he was. That's what that was about. That is why when Jesus was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Is because sin had became, sin had, the bear of sin had gotten so heavy on Christ, sin became, became, came between, sin came between God the Father and God the Son. And that sacrifice had to endure until Christ rose from the dead, went to heaven and presented himself to the Father as a sacrifice for mankind. God loves us, but far as sin in the picture, he, it cannot be connected. God hates sin, not the sinner. Please get that right. World of religion will tell you God hates sin errs. God, the reason God, okay, God hates sin like God hates divorce. And I'm going to tell you this. Okay? So, and I've, I've shared this once before. Um, yeah, that's right, Pastor Divorce. Oh, 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 hear what I'm saying. The reason God hates divorce is because of what it does to his children. He doesn't hate the divorcee. He doesn't hate the people who are involved in divorce. He hates what divorce does. Just like he hates what sin does. He hates what sin does to his creation, to his children, it manipulates, it deceives, it twists, it, it corrupts, it molests. It, it, it does all the things that God had never planned, 
never intended and never purposed for your life. That's why he hates it. And it grieves him when we're in it. So, let's see if we can get to this as we should. All righty. Ewald's heartbeat for the year 2020 has been celebrating his promises. That's where we've been. And we have been holding fast to that, and we have been experiencing his promises uh, in so many different ways. We've heard testimonies of people, you know, writing books, start, uh, buying houses, starting businesses, um, relationships building, you know, coming to grips with with uh, their children, their spouses, their ex-spouses, however. They, 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 they said, I'm in an area now, God, that I hadn't been in before. And I actually enjoy being where I am. Because the more I know of God, the more I want to know of God. And, and Pastor Angela, she gets testimonies and I get testimonies and, you know, we hear from different, uh, our, some of our different leaders of uh, people sharing with them, and it's a powerful thing. Uh, and you don't have to be a member of Ewald to experience, you know, celebrating his promises in this year. All you have to do is believe it. Believe that God has his best for you in this year. Well, if this is the best I'm going to have, ain't no, 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 no. If this is the best you'll have right now, it's going to get better. You're going to experience more. You have to be, you have to have your feelers out. You have to have your expectation. Your expectation needs to be up. That's what faith is. I'm reaching out. I'm reaching in the dark, expecting to grab a hold of something. That's all faith is. Well, there's nothing out there. No, you know it's something out there or you wouldn't be reaching. And that's the thing of all mankind. They're constantly reaching, constantly searching because they know there's something out there, but a lot of times they don't know where to reach to. I'm telling you to reach to God. And you will you will lock on to everything that you need if you reach to him. Okay? Now, we get that celebrating his promises. That comes from Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, and it talks about uh, all the promises of God are yes and amen in him. Pretty much what I'm saying is God's glory is fulfilled when we walk in everything he has placed in Jesus Christ. God's glory is fulfilled his glory is magnified. His glory is seen throughout the earth when we, as his people, walk in everything that is in Christ Jesus. Everything that, everything that we need is in Christ. And, and, and you lock into that, God is glorified by it. Because no matter what comes your way, no matter what calls you get, no matter what letters you receive, no matter what confrontation takes place in your life, you will still maneuver and operate in the way of Christ, which is a transformed life. And when God sees that, God is glorified. All of heaven rejoices when they see the fact that there is someone who is walking out the ways of my son. So, the transformed life comes from our base scriptures, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, and Romans 12 and 2. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. One translation talks about how one that has never been created is now created. And in Romans 12 and 2, it says that don't, be con don't conform to this world. Don't, don't be put in a box by society. Don't be put in a box by man's way of thinking. It said, but be transformed. How am I going to be transformed? By the renewing of your mind. One translation says, by the way you think. You're changed by the way you think. If you don't think you'll get the promotion, if you don't think you'll move up the corporate ladder, you won't. If you don't think you're going to start a business anytime soon, you won't. If you don't think that you're going to um, write the book, compose songs, direct plays, you won't. You won't, you won't, you won't. And if you try to use things like age or they're not giving me a chance or everybody's against me, Whatever God has for you, no man can stop you from getting it. No one can stop you from getting what God has for you, except you. Age can't do it. We see that in the Bible, and we see that even today. Um, multiple failures doesn't, doesn't stop a person. I think Henry Ford went bankrupt three or four times before the Ford Motor Company really took off. I think, um, uh, who is that? Hershey, 
in Pennsylvania. Uh, he went through a, a lot of setbacks before Hershey became a household name and chocolate is around the world. You know, just different things. People, you, you, well, I, I, it's, too, I'm, it's too late for me and I'm too old. And, 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 and no, um, the founder of Rama Bible College started that college when he was 57. Rama, Rama Bible College. Now it's making an impact all around the world. But no matter where it is, what I'm telling you is you don't, don't use certain things that you see before you as a reason not to pursue what you know is inside of you. Don't use what you see in front of you not to pursue what you know is inside of you. Okay? Write the book. Start the business. Compose the songs. Direct the plays. Whatever God is telling you, walk in that. And know that he will give you everything that you need. He'll set aside all the things that is necessary for you to accomplish your goals. Now, here we go. What I'm trying to get to is this. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Any man in Christ is a new creature, old things have passed away. And Romans 12 and 2 says, You, you transform by the renewing of your mind, is this. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I'm transformed by giving Jesus my life. Romans 12 and 2, you're transformed by letting him keep it. So, 2 Corinthians, I give me Jesus my life. And man, my life has changed and I understand things. I'm starting to experience things. But then stuff gets rough. And as Pastor Angela said, sometimes stuff gets hard. And misunderstandings flare up. And I thought, God, you were going to do this thing and you didn't do it. And I thought this other lady was going to help us out and she didn't help us. And, and I know the Lord spoke to that brother over there to do this and they didn't do it. And, and so I'm just kind of like, you know, and I hear on the news that so many things are taking place. And uh, so I don't even know anymore. I, I think I might just walk away. I don't, you know what, maybe this is, maybe this is something I just tried out. You know, maybe, I, maybe I'll go try something else. And God is not for trying. It, it's like this. God is saying, let me keep the life if you want to continue to maintain life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, you gave, Jesus, you gave Jesus your life. Romans 12 and 2, you're letting it, you're being transformed by letting him keep it. Because sometimes this transformation is uncomfortable, but I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Transformation is difficult, but you know what? I'm not leaving this. Some stuff I prayed for I didn't understand, but you know what? I'm staying here. You got to be like Peter. Where else am I going to go? You have the words of eternal life. I'm not moving. You came on my boat, changed my life. I'm not leaving. You saw me at my worst. You still called me to greater. I'm not leaving. And that's what you got to do. You got to dig your heels in and you got to say, this is where I, it's Jesus and nothing else. I'm not going to try this and try that. No, I'm staying here. So here we go. We talked about last week, our transformation. We said, you know, not, forget, not forgetting what you heard, not forgetting what you hear, not forgetting what you're hearing. Well, we're going to continue in that same vein in a way because we're going to talk about how transformation requires the ability to reflect. The ability to reflect. Okay, what does reflect? Like, you mean like look in the mirror or something? It's reflection. And, that, and, and you know, and in a sense, that is the same way because the root word for reflect actually means to bend back or fold back. So it's almost like how light reflects off of a mirror. It, it shoots it back to you. It just bend, it bends it back to you. It folds it back over to you. And so reflect also, it, it, it's, it's, it's this thing where you reflect is a thought, idea, formed or remark made as a result of something that has happened. You, 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 I'll say it again. Reflect. A thought or idea formed or remark made as a result of something that has happened. Another word for reflect is to consider. Another word for reflect is to realize. What do you mean realize? What is real? Vividly become fully aware. Vividly become fully aware. I realize, you know, what well, you became fully aware. Yep, I was, run, run, I was running in the mall and, and, you know, I thought I saw Minister Shawanda. What do you mean you thought you saw? I didn't realize that was not her until I almost got up on the lady. Hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, oh, 
sorry, ma'am. I thought you was. You fully realize it once you got there. So you reflect, that was not her. <laughs> but as a believer, transformation requires the ability to reflect on all the things that you've encountered with God, all the things that God has shown you, all the things that he has yet to show you, but you know who he is. What do you mean by that? Okay. Tell you what, let's go to um, Psalms chapter 8. Let's see what we got here. Psalms chapter 8. I'm going to read to you in, in, in um, NIV version, New International Version. Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 through 6. And, it's, and this is the psalmist. This is, this is what that means to, to, ref, to, to reflect. He says, when I consider... Your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Catch that. Everything under their feet. New Living Translation says this, when I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, uh, the moon, the stars that you set in place, what is mere mortals, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. Understand this. The psalmist sat there to consider. The psalmist sat there and reflected. He said, who am I? That you, I look at, I look at the vast universe. I look at the stars in the sky. I look at the mountains, the rivers. I look at everything that you have made and designed. And I said, wow. Who am I? That you would think that much of me that I would be on your mind. He's reflecting. And, and I'll say this. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He's saying this. Transformation requires reflecting in order to praise. You reflect on where God has brought you from. Well, I'll put it like this. You reflect where God has put you. When you consider the fact that just two years ago, you were homeless. When you consider the fact just four years ago, you had no job. And now here you are, manager of the Southeast branch. Nice car, nice house, active in your church. I'm like, man, God, look. Wow, I mean... Your goodness knows no bounds for me. Even when I wasn't good, you were good. Even when I was a mess, you were good. He said, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you, you pursue me. Look, God, who am I that you would hunt me down and do me good? Transformation requires that you reflect on that and you respond to that in praise. Transformation requires reflecting. You re See, when you reflect, that brings a, 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 a that brings a hallelujah out of you. That brings a thank you, Jesus, out of you. That brings a praise God out of you. That things may not be where you want them, but they are better than where you were. So that brings a God, I thank you. And if you say, well, I, I'm not better. Just last week, I got laid off. But, well, thank God you're still here. And thank God you have a mind to know that God had nothing to do with getting you fired or letting you go. Well, that must be part of God's plan to go ahead and let me go so I can lose my house. No, 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 no. He's trying to teach me to be humble. No. No. What will develop out of this, that is that in everything you'll give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You're not thanking him for getting fired. You're thanking him for the fact that you didn't lose your mind. 
because you lost your job. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who lost jobs and lost their mind. Lost houses, committed suicide. Lost, they, lost, they lost stuff. And because they lost stuff, they lost valuable items, but the priceless possession was not in them. They took their life. Lost valuables, but didn't, they didn't hold what was value, what was valued. So he says, "When I see the works of your hand, what, what he says, who am I that you're mindful of me?" That's what it means when you reflect, when you think, when an idea is formed. When you have a thought or an idea is formed, then a remark is made. You say, God, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for saving me. Here you go. I thank you for saving my son. He ain't saved yet. I thank you for saving my son. Why? Because I know, look, because according to the scripture, even though he's made everything and created everything, he's put it in my hands. He's put it in your hands. He's giving you the authority. It, one tra it says here, one translation said, he's put everything under your feet, which means you have dominion over it, which means I'm going to go out a little bit, so I want you to hang with me. If God created everything for you to have dominion over, and God created the angels, right? Yeah, yeah. You have dominion. Well, Satan was an angel at one time, Lucifer, and God created him. Yeah, okay. Well, he was created by God. God placed everything in your authority. Then whatever God has created is under your control. So Satan can't take over your house. Satan can't take over your thoughts. Satan just can't take, take run, run roughshod on a believer. Because it says here in the word that God has placed everything he created under your feet. Or in another translation, under your authority. And Jesus even told the disciples in, 10, 20, in, in Luke chapter 10, 29, he said, you're going to walk on serpents and walk on scorpions. I've given you all authority over the power of the enemy. So in other words, what, everything that he has made is under your feet. Everything he has made is under your authority. And the only reason certain things are still happening in your life is because you've given it authority. Or you haven't, ex you haven't exercised your authority. You lose sleep because of fear, that's you not exercising your authority. Worry, dread, that's not you exercising your authority. You can declare a thing, decree a thing. Whatever you bind on earth, bound in heaven. Words, we talked about before. Use your words to bind. Use your words to loose. And God's giving you the authority to do both. So your transformation requires, and when you see that, your transformation requires you to reflect in order to praise. God, I thank you that though the enemy tried to defeat me, he is no more. He has no more authority in my life, no more control over anything that I do in my life. And when he tries to rear his head up, I have the authority to cast him out. I have the authority to put him under my feet. You have that. Now, let's go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27, verse 1 through 3. Look at this. Your transformation required reflecting in order for you to praise. Now we're going to see what this is. Okay, well, Pastor, what are we doing here? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Read King James. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. Now, transformation requires reflecting in order to testify. Now, we praise God for what he's, what he's, look, you praise God earlier 
how you see things growing, how you see things changing, how you see futures for your children, how you see success for uh, friends and family, and you see and how you see the world being shifted and changed. You 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 praise God for that, you know. But this here is a testimony. What do you mean? Because the psalmist says here, the and this is what he testifies to. He says, "The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear?" He said, the Lord, okay, first two things he said, the Lord is the light of my salvation and the Lord is the strength of my life. Well, why would you say something like that? He said, because when my enemies and my foes came to eat of my flesh, came to devour me, came to crush me, came to put me under, it says they stumbled and fell. And now, because, it, look, when they came after me, they stumbled and fell. So then the psalmist says, though a host rises up against me, I man. Let them come. He said, if though a host rises up against, he says, the war. Now, war is a thing that takes more than one person. War is not a party of one. War is, a, is many. If you have somebody come, a war is being raged, that means a lot of people are involved. And the psalmist right here says, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. He said, and host camp means on every side. I don't see anything but enemies. Enemies to my left, enemies to my right, enemies to the front and the back. I don't see, that's all I see are enemies. And then he says, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And sometimes people read that and they say, in this will I be confident. And then they'll, they'll make the mistake of dropping down to verse 4 where it says, one thing that I have desired of the Lord. That's a totally different thought. Well, what's, what, what are you saying about the, the in this will I be confident? He will be confident in verse 1. He said, in this will I be confident. What are you going to be confident in? I'll be confident in the fact that the Lord is my light and my salvation. I'll be confident in the fact that the Lord is the strength of my life. In other words, he was saying that this transformation, the transformation requires reflecting in order to testify. I looked back and said, when I was at a point where I was almost taken out, God, you made a way. When my children were hungry, I didn't walk around with a poor mouth. I didn't walk around saying, well, Lord, I sure hope you can. Baby, I don't know what the Lord, Lord's got to do something. No. I walked around with God's going to take care of us. And my wife and I experienced this in Ohio, and some of the leaders know about it too. There was a knock at the door. And we opened the door. Got a call and food on the porch. Bags of food on the porch. It's God continues to show himself strong. We were sat down with a couple, shared our testimony of why we're there. They said, well, you know what? Is it okay if we sow into you guys? And they wrote a check. We weren't asking for it. We weren't looking for it. But God was showing himself each and every time that I'm going to take care of you. Each and every time I'm going to provide for you. Each and every time I will be the one to sustain you. We didn't, we didn't get to a place, we didn't let our minds get to a place, oh, well, this is the end for us, and what was us? I remember I got laid off from a job. Laid off. They were like, man, you've done everything we asked you to do. You, you, you've been on time. You, you, you come with a positive attitude. You, you've been this, you've been that. He said, but we got to let you go. We got to fire you. I'm like, what? And so I called my wife. I called Pastor Angela, and I said, she said, hey, how's it going? I said, hey, hey, doing okay? I said, hey, I just got fired. And she didn't say anything as far as words. She began to sing. She sung the song, I Choose to Worship You. We did not allow the situation to cause us to take our life back from Christ. No, God, you got us in here. And we came here because of you. So we're going to be in here because of you. And so you're my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? I'm not going to fear the man who let me go. I'm not going to fear the person who fired me. You're the strength of my life. So what did you do after that, Pastor? Well, I kind of kicked around the house, laid around. No, I didn't. The next day, I got up, got ready. I did sent out resumes, job application. I would ride with my son to his college, and I would use, because we didn't have a, you know, I would ride with my, with my son to his college, and I would set up in his library, and I would just fill out applications send in resumes, set up interviews every day. I 
got up, got dressed for work like I was going to work, even though I didn't have a work to go to. My mindset was to continue to pursue. And that's where you got to be. Uh, talking with a young man the other night, I said, sometimes in transformation, sometimes in transformation, you got to master the day to day. What do you mean the day to day? Okay, you have a testimony because you testify to what he's done and what he can do for you. So it doesn't matter what comes against you. He, I'm confident, and I, and I don't want, no matter what comes against me, I'll trust the Lord. No matter what comes against me, my trust is in the Lord. No matter what comes against me, I am confident in this. He is my light and my salvation. He is the strength of my life. So in the day-to-day, -day, I mean, sometimes you have to get up, get dressed, go to work, meet the clients, uh, 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 um, do the, the presentation, stop by a pizza hut, grab a pizza, bring it home, feed the kids, do the laundry, sort the mail, uh, uh, take a shower, watch a movie, go to bed. What do I do the next day? Next day you get up, get ready for work, go, go to work, do what you got to do, swing by the Chinese place, pick up some takeout. You, 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 in other words, you keep going through the day-to-day. -day. You, keep, you keep doing what you're doing, but you keep trusting God. A lot of times you're looking for that thing to change quick, and sometimes it doesn't change quick. Sometimes it's like a sunset or a sunrise. It, if, you can, if you sit there and watch one, it takes a little while for it to get up there. But if you don't pay attention to it, oh, wow, the sun's up already? Yeah. It, it moves. Mm -hmm. But there are times when you, you have to be able to master the day-to-day -day when it comes to transformation. It's almost like transitioning. You have to master the day-to-day -day when it comes to transformation. Pastor, you don't understand. We just got evicted. I know. And sometimes all you can do is hit autopilot. What do you mean? Go home, go to work, pack boxes, uh, fix dinner, sit with the kids, play a game with the kids, watch TV with the kids. They go to bed. You go to bed, you get up the next morning, you go to work. So when you get off work, you get some more boxes because you're packing because you know you're being evicted. But you don't let your mind rest in that. You got to let your mind rest in God. I know you. I trust you. And you're going to work things out for me. Even if I got to say with tears in my eyes, loading the U-Haul truck, I still got to say, God, I trust you and you have your best for me. You've got to. You got to testify. I know you've already done great things for me and I know you will continue to do great things for me. This is what I have to hold on to. And I got to praise you for it. God, you, this is not new to you. You knew this was going to happen. Even though I made arrangements with the, the mortgage company, even though I made arrangements with different people, and you knew this was going to happen. And I thank God that nothing catches you by surprise, even though it caught me. That's okay. I'm trusting you. And I'm walking things out with you. And before you know it, that season will be like a dream to you. And I'll say this to you who are in the middle of that season. I know it's, it's rough sometimes. And sometimes it can be difficult, but know this, if you hold fast to God, let him know what's going on in your life. He already knows. No, you got to say it so your ears can hear it. God, I'm, man, I'm hurt. I, I trusted this person and, and, and I, I thought, here we go. I thought by this time in my life, I would be doing X, Y, and Z. And that's okay to share that with God. But even out of all of that you share, and out of all that you unload, and out of all of that you lay at his feet, you have to put a comma there and say, but I trust you. You got to do it. I trust you, God. Well, I thought we'd have the house by now. I trust you, God. I thought you had the promotion by now. I trust you, God. What happened to that new job you're talking about? I trust you, God. What happened to that new ministry you're going to start? I trust you, God. What happened to that college you're going to go to? I trust you, God. I trust you. Regardless of all the stuff, let him have it all. Because know this. It's part of the testimony. It's part of you praising God. And all that's part of your transformation. Now, last scripture, I think, and then we're going to probably put a pause in it because I know we're not going to get to the other three. Three? Yeah, I know. You're just, you know. Um, go with me, if you would, to Luke chapter 15. 
Luke 15, let me verses 14 through 19. Luke chapter 15, verses 14 through 19. I really, really love and appreciate Luke chapter 15 because if you, you read all of it, Luke writes a story and he writes all of Jesus' parables. In Luke chapter 15, it talks about a lost sheep, lost coin, and a lost son. And I like how they put it in a lost son because sometimes all of us know it as prodigal. The prodigal son, no, the lost son. Okay? And we're going to be dealing with that one. Jesus starts the story out with the man had two sons. The oldest one, he had an older one. He was working with him, working in the field, working in the family business. Things going well. The younger one came to him and said, hey, dad, uh, give me my inheritance now. And all of, all of you know that inheritance doesn't take place until someone dies. But he was like, dad, give me my inheritance now. Any money, that, any money, anything that's going to come to me, um, any property that I own, any businesses or portions that I have, I want you to liquidate it all into cash and give it to me. One fat check so I can go. And it's like, so you want your, you want yours now. Yeah, I want mine now. Okay. So the dad gives him his portion. The dad gives him, you know, his inheritance. And the Bible says not too many days after that, the boy packs up, takes the money, and he takes off to a foreign country. He goes up to our land. He's living it up. Living love, vida loca. He is gone out there, man. He is doing his thing. But we, we're going to pick up here in, in, in verse 14 because it, he is living life. He is flying high. He has no worries, or so he thinks. Verse 14. Hmm. I'm going to read to you from King James, and then i got to jump over to the New Living. So I'm going to read King James first. And it says, And when he had spent all, verse 14, And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. The word swine means pigs. Okay. Verse 16. And he would have fain, he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Now. <laughs> I'm read 14, 15, and 16 from New Living. And I want you to catch this. He was flying high. He had no regrets. Everything was good. Hey, everything's on me. I'm a big ball of shot caller. Everything out here, I got it. He's just writing. He's just swiping the card, swiping the card. Swipe, 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 swipe. You know, he, he got platinum. He got gold. He got the, the Onyx card. Said, oh, my God. I've never seen one of those in person. Yeah, man. Uh, and so he's sitting there eating with all his friends. And, you know, they're doing the thing up. And one check. Okay. And then they bring the check. He gives them the card. And anyway, I was saying, you know, this is going to be a great week. I had planned on this going to, you know, different areas to, to fish and different areas to ski. What? what? Decline? Oh, you didn't run it right. Go, go. No, try it again. I don't think you, you didn't do that right. Go ahead and try it again. You tried it twice already. Let me see that one. Um, this is strange. Here, try this one. So anyway, like I was saying, wait a minute. That, was, that didn't work either? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> okay. And of course, everyone that was around the table that he was taking care of, it's funny. Everything, everybody, everyone that was around the table he was taking care of, is no longer there. They're gone. They did a you know a dining dash. And say, it's all on you now. So it, it talks about how when his money was gone, mm -hmm. then famine broke out. And when the famine broke out, he was okay. Read it. New Living Translation. About the time his about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. So all these things began to just fall in place here. He took everything he had, he was wasteful with it, and just as soon as he runs out of money, a famine hit the land. Meaning what? Meaning, even if he went to somebody to get something, they couldn't help him, because they didn't have it. And then he got hungry. 
began to be in want. It says here, verse 15, he persuaded a local farmer to hire him. I, I, I work for food, man. I work for, I, I can't pay you. That's all right. This, I just, I just need a place to stay. Okay. Not too sure about the food either. That's, that's all right. I just need a place to stay. So here he is, persuaded a farmer to hire him. And the man sent him out in the field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that he even, he look, the, the young man became so hungry that even the pods, the husk, the food that the pigs were eating looked good. He was in some dangerous territory. Got to a place where what they were eating looked good to him. Never let yourself get to a place. The only way you can get to that place, oh, oh, oh man, okay. You have to be mindful of where you are and who you are. Be mindful of who you are. Be mindful of who you are. If I if, if, if remember who you are, even if I got to say it in my Simba, bo Simba voice, Mufasa voice, remember who you are. Okay, remember. It said that the young man saw the pigs eating and they were eating like this was the best they had ever had. And he's a man that, that, ah, that sure looks good. Wow. That, man, that looks good. It said the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. He could not go to any man to find any relief. No man could help him. No man could give him sustenance. No man could replenish him. No man could restore him. You get what I'm saying? He said, no man. So what could he do? You got to reflect now. Here we go. Verse 17. In the King James Version, it says this. And he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants, oh, now he's reflecting. How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare and I perish in hunger? He said, I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. New Living Translation says this, verse 17, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at my home, even the servants have food enough to spare. I'll read it to you in an easy reader, easy reader version. The son realized that he had been very foolish. Realized, considered, reflect. Look back on what he's done. Look back, look back on what he's done to where he is now. Look back on what he left to where he is now. Look back and see how well he had it, thought, idea, or, or, or remark made as, a, look, made as an encounter of something that has taken place. Now I gotta read this to you. It said he came to himself. Pretty much, it's pretty much saying he found himself. The son lost himself in his appetite but found himself when he reflected on truth. Because the truth was, his dad's servants did have plenty. He lost himself in his appetites, took his money, and I'm going to do this, I never did that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try this, I've always wanted to know what that was like, I always wanted to experience this. So he lost himself in his appetites. And you know what? He kept looking for himself in his appetites. And you know what? He was still, He was hungry. Because he, in his appetites, he found no one. He looked around and came full circle to his face, looking at, looking at himself face to face because he reflected on the truth. My father's house has plenty. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up from here and I'm going to go back home. And I'm going to apologize for how I acted. And I'm going to apologize for the things I've said and done. And I'm going to apologize because God did not, look, God did not wire me this way and my father didn't raise me this way. There's a lot of things that you may be in right now that God didn't wire you that way and your parents didn't raise you that way. 
You, some of you, I didn't even have parents. That's fine. God never wired you or designed you to be where you are. If it's, not, if it's out of his will, that he never designed you to be there. So a lot of times, the only way you'll see yourself is when you reflect on the truth. We said like the word is a mirror, truth is your mirror. You